thank you, New Holland. It is a, a privilege to be here. Um, I wasn't sure what God was going to do in my life and my ministry. Um, I said no to seven churches before I said yes to y'all. I, I wasn't sure. Um, I wanted to be a senior pastor again. I wanted to, to know what God's will was. And I'm um, very grateful to be here. Um, I don't say this lightly. I love you. And I appreciate what you do. Uh, we're going to do more than just recovery ministry here. We're going to do a few different types of recovery ministry. Um, I said this last week. Sheila's actually, uh, I asked her to pray. And uh, I know that there is a need that's out there. It's very obvious that there's a need that's out there for women who uh, had abortions that are now having to deal with a tsunami of things that they weren't expecting to go and be happening in their life. And uh, they need someone to minister to them. And I think Sheila's absolutely perfect to do that. And she has prayed about it and she has said yes. Now, does that mean the first time we, we meet together we'll have 50 women in here that want to be a part of that? No, it's going to be a a come-and-go type thing. Uh, but I don't care if you begin with one. That's one person that needs uh, ministry and help. And we want to we wanna be a church that does that. We want to help people who are having trouble with finances. And we're going to uh, uh, have uh, ministries towards them as well. We're going to have a lot of things that we're going to do. And some of them are not going to look traditional. We don't have 30 acres. We got a little bit of land here, and we're going to use it to the best of our ability. We're going to take the influence that God's given us, and we want to use it for uh, His glory. And by the way, for His glory alone. So uh, thank you for coming. It is a a, a good day and a special day, and uh, I want to share a quick word with you this morning because we are going to do baptism as well. So if you have your Bible, open it to Matthew chapter number three. Appreciate your prayers this week. I'm walking upright in big boy shoes. I'm not sure the uh, wisdom of having surgery on both feet at the same time, but I've got a little bit of infection in one of them. I ran a fever most of the day yesterday, and we're working on it. We're, we're working on it. So I, I didn't know today if I was going to be able to stand up for 30 minutes, but I don't have to stand up for 30 minutes, so it'll be good. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. You're there, say amen. amen. I'm not going to make you stand in honor of reading God's word, but just listen to what it is that's happening here at this particular point in time. It says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, this was his message, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then look in verse 5, it says, Then Jerusalem and Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. At God's appointed time, at the right time, God had a man prepared. We know him today as John the Baptist. That doesn't mean that he was part of our denomination. He was John the Baptizer. This was his ministry. This is what he was seeing. He was a preacher of God's word, but he was a preacher of sin. A lot of people today don't want to hear messages about sin. They want messages that make you feel better. Well, if you deal with your sin, I promise you, the maker of our being, the God who is there to forgive, will help you feel better. But if you just cover it up or ignore it, it's just like cancer. It's not going to do any good. And we all are born with a sin problem. We all have a sinful nature about us, a fallen nature. We have a, a, a wrecked life that can only be made good and right and clean by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by what he did on the cross of Calvary. So to prepare for the ministry of Jesus when he came, John was out preaching repentance. And there was something that came from that. People said, I need repentance. And by the way, I need repentance. I need repentance. I don't know about you, but I still have areas in my life where I'm weak. 
Old King James Version, one of the verses that I memorized in the Old King James, we're dealing with the sin that does so easily beset us. Now, you might not, that may not make much sense to you, but I'm telling you, every one of you have weaknesses and areas. And you've been dealing with it for a while. We all are under the ministry of repentance. Matter of fact, every day I need to repent. Every day I need to deal with the broken areas of my life. And probably just like you, I feel like I let God down. But I'm grateful that the God who loves us, who saved us, forgives us. He loves us with an everlasting love. That might be hard for you to understand, but even while you're doing the things that you really don't want to do, God's there to accept you. We must receive the forgiveness. And that comes with repentance. Best you know how. In and out in those circumstances every day. Now this is what they would do as an outward show of their repentance. They would be baptized. To the Jews in that day, if you became a Jew, but you were a Gentile before, you would be baptized, showing a different life. Showing the death to the old life, raised to walk in newness of life. Sounds very New Testament, doesn't it? But that was all the way through the Old Testament. But here, John was saying, you need to repent of your sinful ways. And the way to do that is saying that you publicly are going to make a stand that you're going to live your life now for God. So they would do baptism, showing going under the water. The word baptize means to immerse. I know others are saying, well, we do it in a different way today. The word means to immerse, and the picture only makes sense if you do immersion because it shows the death, burial, and resurrection. It shows a new life. So going under the water shows death to the old life. Raised up out of the water shows the new life. You die, you're placed in the grave, but then you're resurrected for a new life. That's what it shows. So those people who came to John saying, said, I need to change my life. Oftentimes in church, when we have the sermon, after the sermon, we will have repentance. We'll have an invitation. And we'll give you a, an opportunity to say, I need to change too. It's always amazed me that the ones who come to the altar don't care. They, they know that they need to come and bow before God because that's so very important. They don't care that someone else is watching. But a lot of times in our modern day, people don't do that because they're afraid of what others will think. Let me tell you, they already know. You may be putting on an act as if you've got it all put together perfectly. I know and you know and you know that I know that you don't. So really, there's a, a serious new even that. But in that day, they would show baptism. But then, look what it says later on in verse number 13. Matthew 3, 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized but you, and you are coming to me. You see, John understood a baptism of repentance. But Jesus never sinned. What did he have to repent of? He was the Son of God from heaven, born in Bethlehem to, to, to Mary with a stepdad, Joseph. He was born of God. He was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. Now, we understand that others needed to have the baptism of repentance, but what did he have? to repent of not a thing but yet he still came so John's like no 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 I, you're the one that I need to be baptized I, I'm broken I need to be baptized by you but look what verse 15 yet says then Jesus answered and said to him permit it to be so for thus it is fulfilling it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness for 30 years Jesus was on this earth quiet the good son to Mary and Joseph. He went to Sabbath school. He went to church. He was the good neighbor. He was the good friend. He was the helpful person. 
He was the one that was always loving and kind. I guarantee you all the other kids who lived in his neighborhood, the other parents said, why can't you be more like Jesus? Always respectful, always doing the right thing. But yet now his ministry is beginning. And at the beginning of his ministry, he was showing what his ministry would be about. Not just repentance, but salvation. At the beginning of his ministry, he was showing the cross of Calvary. He was showing the borrowed tomb from Joseph of Arimathea where he would stay three days in that tomb. He was showing the resurrection that, that we call Resurrection Sunday. Some people call it Easter today where he would defeat sin and death and come forward to not just have life but to be the author of new life. And we as Christians have new life in him. Praise God. So now we come and we repent of our sins, but we don't stop there. We don't repent of, we, we repent of what we used to be, what we were before the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ, but then we give our life to him. Listen to me, church. We've made little of this. We've made very little of this. Jesus is Lord of all. Not the Lord of what you want to give him. He's the Lord of all. Anything and everything that he leads us to do, the two words need to be, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't care if it's easy for us. I don't care if you think, if you want to do the gymnastics of arguing with God, go ahead, you'll lose. His way is not just a good way. It's the best way. It's the right way. And it's the one that he will anoint and bless. And the faster you learn that, the better your life will be. He said, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Look in verse 16. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God was amening. The plan of salvation created before the foundation of the world. And the heavens opened and the Spirit came and rested upon him. Is that symbolism? Absolutely. People today who want to make little of baptism say, well, it's just a symbol. I don't have to have it to be saved. If Jesus did it, who had no sin... And he asked us to do it so that we can be right with him. And the Spirit descending, showing the anointing of God, and surely we want to have that same anointing upon us. If the symbol of the dove coming down was a symbol of Christ, the Holy Spirit resting on him, which he already had every day of his life, he was fully God, then why should we not do the same symbol? Why should we also not show the symbol of the death, the burial, and the resurrection? Never make small or light of what Jesus walked 30 miles to do. He went to that place for that purpose, for that reason, so that everyone, listen to me now, so that everyone would understand what his ministry was about. But truly, they never really realized until after the cross and the grave and the resurrection. That's why when we get to Acts chapter 2, we're on this sermon series called The Church Triumphant. That when we get to Acts chapter 2, verse 41, it says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls 
were baptized. Now, Mark, think about the logistics of that. If there was ever a point in time for somebody to say, hey, no big deal, I don't want to have to wait in line, that would have been it. I'll catch you next week, maybe next month. I am amazed at how many people who say that they have Jesus Christ, they are a Christian, that they're a believer, that they're a member of a church, but that they've never been baptized. What delaying of one week became a month, became six months, became 30 years. Who do you think is the author of delaying procrastination? The one who doesn't want you to stand up and do that for him. I will tell you that in my life, in my Christian life, 47 years being a Christian, just about everything in the Christian life is what God has done for me. Can y'all amen that? I am blessed. I am overwhelmingly blessed. But there's a few things that he asked us to do for him. He asked us to follow him in what we call communion or the Lord's Supper because when he said to them, do this in remembrance of me, he asked them to do it, but when you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And he asked us to be baptized. Paul said later in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said, I'm, I'm dead to the old way. And that's truly the picture of it. Sheila said it. We're a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. If he is Lord, then die to the old way. That's the symbolism of baptism. Raised to walk in newness of life. Every day praying, every day seeking his will. By the way, Acts chapter 8, Philip, a new deacon, by the way, God sent him to a certain place, found a certain man, an Ethiopian eunuch. He shares the gospel with him, and the Ethiopian eunuch says, here, there is water. What prevents me from being baptized? Nothing. Listen to me now. Why am I saying that? Immediately, immediately, he was baptized. And went on his way. Saul, who would later on become Paul, in Acts chapter 9, a reluctant servant of God, God told him to go talk to Saul. And he did. He, by the way, he, he, he said, isn't this the one who's been doing, I've been hearing all these terrible things that he's doing. But yet he was obedient to God and went and told Saul, and the scales, Saul was blind, and the scales, as it were, fell from his eyes. Now as a new believer, and it says, and immediately he was baptized. Why should we make little of what God made much of? Why should we look at, at it as just some nice thing to do, maybe just a symbol later on, when God said, this is important? Is he a God of love? Yes. Does he love you no matter what? Absolutely. Should you seek to be obedient to him with all your heart? Most definitely, yes. We have two that have come this morning that are to be baptized. Mark, if, if you and our two candidates will go and prepare, you can come now. Some people have said to me, I'd be embarrassed. I guarantee you, the way our building's built, that's the only way you can walk. Right? And yet, they were asked to do it and they did it. I promise you one day, when Jesus was baptized, not only did the, the dove come and land upon him, but a voice came from heaven, God's amen, said, this is my beloved son. In him I am, what's the two words? Well pleased. 
one day I'm going to stand before him. I'm going to breathe my last breath here and I'm going to breathe my first breath there. And I want to stand before him knowing that I've done everything that I can to honor him. And I want to hear those two words. Well pleased. If there's any area in my life that is not the way that it should be, what I want to do is repent and get it right. And I don't know all of your circumstances, but I do know that there are people today in this room that are professing Christians, but I do know that you have yet to take the step of believer's baptism. I'm not going to embarrass you. That's not what I do. But I am. I am going to ask you to be obedient. You need to do what God's asked you to do. Look, I don't go back there and put anybody in an arm bar and take them down the aisle and say, you need to get saved. Have y'all ever seen me do that in eight months? No. Have I wanted to? A few times. <laughs> I'm, here to be your, I'm here to be your pastor. I'm here to walk beside you. I'm here to encourage you. So if you hear me encouraging you to do what I know is best for you, then amen. Do not make light. Do not make little of what he made much of. Janice, as they prepare, would you just come and just softly play? And the rest of you right now, this is a private thing, but as they get ready, would you just bow your heads? I want you to talk to the Lord. And some of you know that you have not been baptized. And you need to tell the Lord right now if you're willing. You need to say yes to him. And then you can come and talk to me. As a matter of fact, if there's any area in your life that God has put his finger, that God has been working in your life, you need to be willing to say yes to that right now.